What's up guys? Today we're going to compare Retros versus OGs. More specifically, the Air Jordan 1 Retro versus OG. So a lot of people wonder what's the big difference between the two? Why is one thousands of dollars and one's just a few hundred? I mean, there is a huge difference, but one thing you do have to understand though is that most OG collectors are somewhat psychotic. For those of you that are new, this is Vintage Kicks Gallery. All right, so what we have here today are a pair of retros and a pair of OGs. And I've selected two different colorways because they really do give you an accurate representation of the differences. So, little backstory, I started collecting OGs uh, several years ago. I can't think of, probably around 2000, I think I got my first one in 2011 or 2012. So I'm, I'm still relatively new to the game and learning more every day. But uh, one thing that really caught me off guard is after I got my first pair of OGs, nothing else hit the same. So, as the homies from the Sneak Disc say, retros are replicas. And I truly believe that. So, hear me out before you, you leave the channel. Here's what I'm saying. Let's take these two for instance. We have a 1985 metallic red. We have a 2017, is that right? I think 2017. So just look at them for the beginning of this. Do these look the same to you? And really, really look at the fine details. Okay, I admit from 30 feet out or whatever, yeah, they, they essentially seem the same. But when you start looking at it, you'll really realize that this shoe and this shoe share no parts in common. This one is going to look fat and bloated. It's gonna have um, less tapering lines and far less definition and detail. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. So let's take a look. The toe box. One of the biggest things people complain about on the retro is this toe box compared to the OG. Notice how the OG has a nice, sleek, narrow, low toe box. And take a look at this. It just doesn't look anything alike. It throws the whole shoe off. Now, the reason why they do that on the retros is to make them fit a little bit bigger, a little bit more comfortable, but still, it just doesn't look right. The next thing that should be most evident to you is the check or the spoosh. Why Nike ever got rid of this oversized check is beyond me because that is the staple of the Air Jordan 85. In fact, most of the shoes from the mid to early 80s had these oversized pronounced checks and that gives them a ton of character. You would think Nike would want to continue that brand image and that trademark image and make it as big and um, as apparent in our face as they can, but that's just not the case for some reason. Now, take a look at the actual definition and detail of these, and what you're going to notice is, not only is this extremely different in quality, but the details have just been lost over the years. And let's take a look at what I mean by that. Look at the stitching definition and these thick cuts that we have here versus these shallow cuts, um, improper stitching, it really takes away from the actual silhouette of the shoe. At the same time, we have this other weird thing that Jordan brand started, and that is the way they tilt the heel. So notice on the 85, it has a signature up and down look. That helps add to the sleekness and the taper of the shoe. It's what makes it look so beautiful, really. This, we have this weird slant forward. We have these steps. So take a look at this. You have this step here, then it goes up gradually, indents, straight up, back at an angle, which is really weird, and then the back curves as well. 
We're starting to get away from them to the point that they don't look anything like this to me anymore. I mean, I know I'm biased because I'm around 85s all the time, but still, it's quite crazy. Other than that, this sole definition makes a huge difference as well. This is something that the 1985 and the 85 New Beginnings pack and the Reverse Bread really nailed and gave us that look. But take a look at this, the way this jets out and follows the uh, curvature of the shoe, whereas this is just plain. Uh, quite a big difference. Look at this sock liner. Look how cheap this looks compared to the OG. It's unbelievable. And we haven't even gotten into the build quality of the materials. For that, let's put these aside and let's look at an OG Royal versus a Retro Royal. And these did drop in 2017. Now, when these first dropped, I said how good a quality they were. And I wasn't lying about that. They are really good quality as far as the leather is concerned. However, Nike did this crazy move that they've continued on since of pebbling the leather and adding texture to the grain. It's artificial. So if you take a look at an OG, you'll notice it has smooth leather. The grain barely pops through. You can tell it's full grain leather, but it's not artificial like this. At the same time, they took these weird checks and made them raw, which I do like a raw cut leather, but then they skimped out on the areas that should be raw cut. So this is a botched retro in my opinion. Um, they didn't get much right. And then finally, let's talk about the build quality, the materials. Everybody knows Jordan 1 toe boxes crease and they look ugly. I mean, take a look at these. This is a pair I wear occasionally. And look how, I mean, those creases don't look good. They don't look intentional. Take a look at this. This pair has been worn dozens of times. It doesn't look anything like that. So these wear a hell of a lot better. A OG Jordan 1 looks better the more you wear it, whereas a retro looks worse. So at the end of the day, how I feel about these is don't get yourself in a situation like I'm in where the retro no longer satisfies you. It just drives me crazy at this point. I see these as two different shoes. The only way I can really describe this or um, make an analogy is a classic car. Let's take a classic 19, let's take a 66 Mustang or 65 Mustang against the new one. Yeah, the new one's faster, it drives better, but can you tell me they look anywhere near as important from one another? <sighs> one of them is timeless. One of them ages better, like a fine wine. While the, the new one, while it has homages to the original, is just bulbous, it's fat, it just doesn't make sense and will not stand the test of time, in my opinion. So, I know this is a hot take, I know this is controversial, I don't want to offend anybody that's got big retro collections, I collect retros myself. But at the end of the day, there is a significant difference between the OG and the retro, and I would love to see Nike bring back the 85 New Beginnings and the 85 reverse bread shape across the entire lineup. And I think everyone will agree with me, that's the move. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this one. Um, we are starting another giveaway, and this giveaway is for either a shirt or a framed print, depending on uh, basically how many of these we can get. So here's the deal. With the coronavirus, our printer is shut down. We also, we have a small amount of all of this and we can do giveaways, but I want you to decide whether you want this now or you want this shipped after the quarantine is finished. I don't want to put anybody in a position where they ship something and they're afraid of it. So we're happy holding on to this, but we are going to start the contest and the contest password is retro OG. That's it. So it'll be live by the time this posts. Go to the link in the description or visit the85project.com and click on the YouTube button and then you'll see contests. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe, please like, and have a good one. Thanks.